Thank you very much for inviting me again uh, to this uh, very important conference uh, and uh, also welcome here in, uh, in Vienna. Uh, of course, it's for us, this is a special uh, importance of uh, this conference because it's uh, dealing with uh, Central and Eastern Europe and this is, of course, uh, uh, one of the main uh, fields where also our central bank, the Austrian central bank, uh, is of interest, where we uh, also have very good contacts <clears throat> with uh, the countries uh, concerned and uh, which is, uh, fortunately, uh, the most dynamic uh, region of Europe. Uh, being being an, a central bank and an economist, uh, I will uh, present you with some uh, with some slides. But uh, in the interest of the organizers, I will keep it very sh very short. Uh, so what you what you see is uh, with. Uh, <clears throat> the growth rates again that uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe is is the region where we are expecting the highest uh, the highest growth uh, for the future uh, and if you just look at the right uh, uh, slide uh, <clears throat> this is also the region where with the exception of some uh, countries uh, we really have had uh, an increase in real GDP since the uh, the, the big crisis of 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, which, uh, uh, as you see, is not something everybody has managed. Uh, but uh, I think, again, this shows that uh, this is a region uh, which uh, is dynamic and uh, which uh, will remain uh, dynamic. Uh, but, of course, uh, uh, we uh, have uh, situations uh, of uh, uncertainties. And uh, one element uh, is uh, especially, of course, also reflected uh, in, the bond, uh, in the bond markets. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so the, here you see the, <coughs> the longer term, uh, medium term uh, <coughs> developments. Uh, what we see now, and this is uh, in, the last, in the last, let's say, uh, weeks or months, that uh, we clearly have an increase in the long-term interest rates. So if you compare uh, so the, the numbers in the interest rate of Germany uh, in September, the 10-year German bond uh, still had an interest uh, uh, rate of 0 0.06. And we had uh, days when it was even negative. Now latest number is 0 0.32. Austria from <clears throat> 0 0.25 to 0 0.52. So we clearly have an increase in the long-term interest rate, which means also that uh, <clears throat> the interest curve is getting steeper, which is a good message for the banking industry. So I think this is uh, one of the, <laughs> as the, the finance minister has uh, uh, rightly so talked about the profitability of <clears throat> the banking system. This is an element uh, that, uh, that will help. Uh, it is, in my view, a normalization. It's not uh, something to be seen as something uh, negative. I think it's uh, to be seen as something uh, positive. Uh, uh, but, of course, it also has to be seen in the context of the situation, of the world situation that we're just having now. I have been just uh, coming back from a meeting the, at the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS, in Basel, where, which is kind of the central bank of central bankers. So we, we had a meeting uh, with of the central bankers of the world. And uh, one leading uh, American central banker, uh, <coughs> uh, alluding to, to the US, uh, said what we, and uh, as you know, the relationship between the Fed and Mr. Trump is perhaps not the most cozy one. Uh, <coughs> uh, but uh, alluding to the present uh, situation, uh, he said, what we see is a positive change of the animal spirits. And that is, of course, it's all about psychology, which is a good thing and also a risky thing, because it's working very strong just now, but we all know psychological uh, <coughs> tendencies may also change quite abruptly. 
So I think it's uh, perhaps really more about uh, the animal spirits. But this uh, change in the animal spirits now leads to the expectation of higher growth in the US. As the US is an economy de facto at uh, full employment, this will lead to higher inflation and this will lead to higher interest rates. So, so there is a very, a very clear uh, expectation in this, uh, uh, in this line. And it also leads uh, to quite a change in the basic philosophy uh, in uh, economic policy, a stronger role for fiscal policy and the preparedness to engage in higher fiscal deficits, uh, which from the point of view of the central banks of course means that central banks are not any longer, will not any longer, be the only game in town. For central banks, this might mean that we have more freedom of in the, with regard to interest rate policy. So there might be some kind of uh, uh, fundamental changes, but as I said before, based on the, very much on psychological factors which are very difficult uh, to, uh, to predict. I have to say for us at the ECB and at the uh, Euro area, uh, we have a much more cautious approach to this, knowing that uh, in the EU we have much less uh, possibilities uh, for expansionary fiscal policies. So we think that uh, uh, we, and what we see is headline inflation is increasing quite substantially, but core inflation not really very much. Uh, so it is uh, for the time being at least mainly due to uh, the effects of uh, rising uh, oil prices, energy prices, but of course uh, also uh, rising oil prices at the end of the day may feed through uh, into the core inflation. So this is, but this is something that might uh, take uh, <clears throat> some time. So, uh, so therefore, uh, we have had a rather cautious uh, discussion uh, at uh, our last uh, uh, session of the governing council. <laughs> I can I'm not allowed to say anything about the future because tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we have another session of the governing council. So. I am in the quiet period uh, of the ECB, but uh, you are aware uh, about the <coughs> uh, decisions uh, that we have been uh, taken uh, there. And uh, these are, of course, uh, <coughs> uh, decisions to go on uh, with our QE program. So these are the, so the first messages. And the second messages, and this is uh, what you see that uh, uh, about uh, the scope of securities we are going uh, to buy. Uh, is that we have made sure that we will have enough material uh, because uh, it's not just only <laughs> to announce that we are going to buy, you have to buy, really. And uh, so there was a certain period of time uh, fear that there might be a shortage of material. Uh, this is not uh, relevant, I think, very much today. First, because we have enlarged the scope what we are, are, are going to buy. And also, of course, the rising interest rates, the market, uh, the market uh, interest rates, of course, help us with uh, our, <coughs> our buying uh, uh, program. Uh, so, uh, for the ECB, for the, uh, for the, <coughs> uh, the region of Central, Eastern, uh, Southeastern Europe. Uh, of course, uh, the policy of the ECB does have, of course, uh, spillovers. And uh, I think uh, <coughs> uh, these are rather positive uh, spillovers, and especially uh, transmitted through a variety uh, of channels. So, uh, as you see here, and we have, I'm referring here to a special study uh, we have been doing at the, at the Austrian Central Bank. So we have the trade channel uh, spillovers, so that uh, if we have a heightened demand uh, <coughs> in the EU uh, area, uh, this uh, uh, might offset 
positive, uh, pos potentially uh, negative effects uh, from appreciation of uh, uh, <coughs> currencies uh, of uh, Central and East European uh, countries. And you have seen this, so that uh, also countries that had uh, appreciations in their currency still have uh, quite uh, substantial current, current account surpluses. So uh, it's the demand side that is really a very uh, <coughs> Uh, relevant, and of course, uh, on the financial uh, uh, channel, it's quite obvious that the longer-term uh, <coughs> yields in uh, CCE have been uh, declining in parallel with the euro uh, uh, yields. Uh, this uh, driving up equity prices, and now again with coming as well from the US, of course, with this tendency of increasing yields, this is also something that might uh, kind of have a direct effect via the financial uh, channel. <clears throat> so uh, I think that uh, in this uh, situation, uh, <clears throat> we are still in a, uh, of course, uh, in a situation where 2017 will remain uh, a challenging year. It is also a challenging year uh, for the banking industry and what we will see and what we are already observing is a tendency for a stronger differentiation within this uh, industry and within countries. So of course uh, we have a certain stronger differentiation within countries and following up what uh, our finance minister just said, I'm glad to say that uh, for the Austrian sit banking situation, uh, this uh, successful solution of the Hypo Albe Adria problem really has cleared the way, so we have no major uh, problems now uh, in the Austrian uh, banking uh, world. Uh, we have, of course, also uh, a differentiation within, uh, within countries. Uh, that is something that might lead to further concentration processes, maybe also transnational uh, concentration processes in the European uh, banking scene. Uh, <clears throat> of, on the European level, uh, the last year saw quite a progress in the European Banking Union. So the single supervisory mechanism is working. Uh, we have uh, now uh, EBA in London, had been successful in um, creating uh, single comparable standards for many important definitions. <laughs> One important uh, definition is, for instance, the definition of non-performing loans. And uh, as uh, the minister has just said before, uh, this is, of course, an increasing problem, but it's a problem of visibility. They had been non-performing before, but now with the, with the single and so a definition, they become visible. It's a bit uh, similar uh, to what uh, Alan, Greenspan, Alan Greenspan once said, if the flood recedes, you see who is bathing naked. And I'm afraid some European banks have been bathing rather naked. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I think it's a good thing to, not, to see now that uh, uh, we have uh, comparable standards in Europe. Uh, therefore, we know where the problems are. And uh, hopefully, we are going to solve them. And I'm glad that this uh, meeting can be part of solving parts of the problems we have but it's the privileged situation of this meeting that you are dealing with a part of Europe that is really now not a problem part, but a, pro a part of hope and a region of success. Thank you very much.